is faithful for all be for by his hand is leaded me Amen We shall pray again Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this day that you have given us, O oh Father. As we come before you, Lord Jesus, as your children are son, Father, we just need you to lead us in this way. Father, Lord God, without your unchanging hand, Without your hand of leadership, Father, there is no one of us who can find the way. But Lord Jesus, when you take the lead, especially in this age of confusion, Father, we are sure to find the way. Just because you are the one leading us. Father, we thank you as your children, O oh God. We just want to come before you once again and say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your leadership, O oh God. Thank you for your unchanging hand, which is a caring hand, Father. We thank you. We honor you, God. May you bless us, O oh Father, and keep us, O oh God. As we come before you, we pray. Then may you refresh us before you, God. Father, in moments like this, we sure do need you, Father. And we just want to let you know, Lord, that we love you more than ever before. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. We shall turn to our Bibles and just read uh, from God's Word where we had read uh, when we were talking about striving lawfully. And uh, I would like to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ as we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26. Amen. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, uh, we shall begin reading from verse 24. Amen, amen. Are we there? Amen. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? But one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do obtain a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as a suddenly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. I'll read up to 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Amen. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. You may be seated. Uh, I will also uh, read from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. 2 Timothy Chapter 2, verse 5. It says this, And if a man also strive for masteries, 
Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I just want to read also one more scripture, and this is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, uh, that is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I just want you to uh, look at that scripture again. I just love it. I read it again. Just one. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which don't so easily be us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Praise God. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, I just want to highlight a few things, then uh, we, uh, after that, we'll see how the Lord will lead us, but just a few things here. And uh, I, the last time when uh, we talked about this, uh, I had uh, made mention of what used to happen uh, in Greece and also in Corinth. Uh, these were places where we used to have uh, Olympic Games. And um, most of you who uh, study sports, you'll find out that uh, these were things that were being done, different kinds of sports in uh, uh, Greece. They, uh, they enjoyed sports and things like those. So uh, what I just want us to look at here, now Paul uh, was using the same format of presenting his gospel the way Jesus did. And uh, if you read the gospels, you will see that Jesus Christ employed uh, a method uh, uh, we call, uh, uh, or he used parables. And uh, parables, these were not just uh, uh, stories that people didn't know. He would look at what was happening in life at that time. Then he's going to employ or to use. Don't look at the board, just look at me. I see you're looking at there. I'm not pointing there until I point there. So just pay attention to what I'm saying. Amen. I guess you like that scripture too. You, you're fine. You're fine. I was just talking. To <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, so what uh, Jesus was doing was he was uh, like, for instance, when he talked about uh, the parable of the sower. Uh, it was not something that people didn't know. It was something that people could see happen. You know, somebody will prepare the ground. And then you'll get the good seed to go and put in the ground. But you see, he said, now when this man who came sowing good seed into the field, but he said when men went to sleep, there was another man who came in black. You see, and he began to throw also seed in that same field. See that? 
Then he says that uh, when uh, uh, the seas begin to grow, we had the wheat and the tares in the same field. And you see, the servants came and say, Master, but when you were planting, you did not plant the tares. You only planted the wheat. And how come we have tares in there? And of course, we understand that tares is the seed of discrepancy. It's not the seed that God planted, but yet it was planted. Now, the man in black is Satan in types. You see that? The son of man is the prophet. See that? Planting the seed. The right seed. So now, um, what I'm trying to say here, that so if you look at those parables, the meaning is so deep. It is not just, you cannot just look at them from the face value. So Paul here, when he saw what was happening around, he thought that if I use these examples, the things that people know, I'm going to drive spiritual truth to them so they may understand what I'm talking about. So now, uh, in Greece, we had uh, different uh, sports or contests. We had the chariots. People would run on the chariots. With the chariots, I mean, we had the foot race, athletics. We had wrestling. And then we also had boxing. But then now the last two that is wrestling and boxing, uh, it was also, it was, they could combine the two where people would wrestle at the same time, uh, you know, boxing each other and all that. So we had uh, this type of games uh, uh, in Greece. And also I told you in Corinth, uh, we also had a center where these games were also held. So now, uh, the most important thing here I want you to understand is that Paul says, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Right. Now, the moment you hear this word lawfully, that means you are playing according to the games of the rules. You see? The rules of the game. I mean to say that. You see, you are observing the rules of the game. Amen? Amen? You are not just playing. <laughs> you see, there are rules and every game has rules. Now, before you participate in anything, as Paul is telling them here, you see, you must understand the rules of the game you are interested in playing. Let me take an example like athletics. Uh, most of you, when you are in school, maybe you participated in that. You know, uh, competing schools against another school, or maybe you have had the chance to look at the Olympic Games, athletics, and see how people run. You see, the long distance runners, most of you from Kenya, uh, you, you should be knowing more about that, the long distance and all that. So we have, uh, in athletics, we have uh, short races. And we also have long races. We have the relays when, you know, people have a stick. So you give uh, to your partner and on and on and on and on and like that. But you see, uh, many years ago, we could, you could see somebody hiding a stick. And then in that confusion, he will take off. And the other one will have the stick. You see? But then now that's why we have the referee who is observing to make sure that the rules are kept or obeyed. You see that? Oh, let me say, you know, you know when you look at the races, we have um, uh, the lines are demarcated with the, uh, you see there's a clear color showing the, the lens. 
So, you know, before you start, there are some races where they say, okay, this is your lane, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. I'm not going in detail on that, but just to give you a picture of this. And then when you begin to run, you run in your lane. Now, the long distance races are a little different. See? But you run in your lane. Now, if you move, you go to the other lane, even if you come number one, you are disqualified. You see that? You may have done your best, you see. And in all these things, everybody is striving. You are striving. I am striving. Every Christian is in the rest. See that? Now, we need to understand this. Every Christian is in the rest. The moment you call yourself a Christian, what you are telling me is, brother, I'm in the rest. Now, if you tell me you are not a Christian, then I understand there is nothing you are fighting. So, you know, you can live any kind of life. You can do whatever you want to do. But when you say you are a Christian, then right there you put yourself in the race. And if you put yourself in the race, we have the rules or conditions that govern the race. You see that? What we need to pray is God to give us the spiritual and also physical energy that we may serve the Lord. Amen? Now, you are not coming with your rules. Your trainer or the referee tells you, now these are the rules of this game. You see that? You volunteered to run, not to join athletics or boxing. Nobody forces you. You volunteer yourself. You want to do that. That's right. Now, when you volunteer, you are not coming and saying, but you see, I'm volunteering, but I have rules. I want to play this game the way I want to play my game. You see that? Amen. But it's, that's what we as Christians are doing right now. You see that? That's the reason why we have so many people claiming to be Christians. But each has, wants to do his own thing. You see that? And then the problem is, now when it comes now to the Bible, you see, it's just one. But now it falls under what people say, hermeneutics, which is the interpretation or the science that deals with the Bible interpretation. Where somebody says, oh, yeah, this scripture says this, but I don't accept it that way. I accept it the other way. You see that? So now, oh, this one talks about, oh, baptize. No, I don't accept it that way. I just want the priest to throw water on me, I'm baptized. You see that? Or you are told that this is what it is. You have to repent. You say, no, I don't have to repent. I don't have to, to, to repent, but I'm just a Christian. You see that? Now, what are we doing? You are coming with your own rules. Now, you cannot come with your own rules to end a game. You see, now if you have a trainer, the trainer will teach you. The trainer will tell you these are the rules for this game. Amen. The referee will train you. The referee will tell you this is what it is. You see that? Then when you go now in the real game, now we have these men, a bunch of them from either side, they're watching to make sure that everybody's playing according to the game. That's right. Amen. That's right. 
You hear of that he was given a yellow ticket. Now after that you get red. You disqualified from the game. It doesn't matter what you'll do. You disqualified. Once the referee says you're out, you're out of it. You can't say no. I stay. You can't stay. Amen. See that? But when it comes to the house of God, this is how you want to act. You see. This is how you want to act. You, you want to come with your own thing, with your own idea. You want to dress the way. You, you see, let me say this, brother. You see what? If you go to any interview, they have rules. They're going to tell you how to dress. You are not going to choose how you want to do it. And if you're so angry and upset, don't just go there. They tell you, come dress like this. Why? Because they don't want you to be a distraction. Amen. See that? Amen. Right. Amen. When people, we don't go to the beach, but I'm just saying people who go to the beach, there is a certain way they dress to go to the beach. You see that? Because those kind of clothings, that go to them there. See that? But you want to go and talk to the president. You have to find out people who go there, how do they dress? Because they may not let you in. You see that? And let me tell you, the word of God did not leave anything. In here, we have in everything. Anything, if you just want to know. If you just want to know how to live your life, the word of God has rules. If you want to know about the holiness of God, the word of God will tell you how to live holy. When it comes to marriage, the word of God will tell you how to marry and how to live with your wife. You see that? But we who are wearing a badge of the name Christianity, we are becoming a disgrace to this very Bible I'm holding. I was listening to a Muslim who was speaking to the Christians and he was calling them harlots. You see that? He was saying, look at the way our women dress and look at the way your women dress. And he would give them scriptures in the Bible, yet he does not believe the Bible. But he uses the Bible against them. You see that? He says, look, you are weary. You're almost naked on the streets. And you will go into the data of rape in America. So high. Why? Because people are already walking naked out there. So what else do you expect? You see that? Now I felt so bad. I'm like, wow, it, is a, it was a disgrace. You see that? You go, to, you go to the stores around, you go there, to the stores around here, you will never see that in the Muslim countries. Yet they're far away from God. On the register, you see pictures of naked men and women. You will never see that. But see what we've done now. Until in a church back in some country, don't want to call the name of the country, you know, women came to church and saw the, the, priest, the priest couldn't preach. It was even a Catholic church. It was a distraction. Until they said, get those women out. Dress so badly, sitting so badly, it was a distraction. The man couldn't preach. You see that? But you see, in all these things, the Bible gives information. Now, the, the rules I'm talking about. Amen? These are the rules I'm talking about. Now, don't tell me because I know this is what many Christians are saying now. Many Christians are saying this. And they're misquoting Paul. They say this. I don't have to follow the law no more. Okay, just hold on. I'm not saying you follow it, but just hold on a little bit. 
I don't, I don't keep the law no more. You see that? Because the law doesn't save me. Okay, I have a question for you. Then did or does the Bible say you break the law? So you have to understand when Paul is talking about this, what is he talking about? You have to understand. Because you have to understand, if you keep reading, just Paul. Don't just quote one part of the scripture. Keep reading the whole of it. Because he says the law was given because of transgression. You see that? Amen. There was a time in this country we didn't have the traffic lights. You know that. But as the population increased, as the cars were being made, now we had so many accidents. Then somebody discovered there is something we can do that can control all this. I think it was an African American who finally came up with the traffic lights. Now, they now put the traffic lights Okay, even if there is nobody watching, you know it's a law. You see that? Now, you can decide to break it because you are not under the law. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to be arrested. You're going to cause an accident. You see that? So when you reach there, you just stop. And the other person who is, when he sees there is the yellow, there is the, the green light, him, he doesn't have to worry about somebody who is coming from the other side because you know it's your turn to go. You see this? So this law was given to correct that problem. You see that? Now, if you read the law of God, God says, I had divorce. That's in the Bible. Amen. Now, have you ever wondered, sometimes, you know, remember we were here, we did a little wedding here, and I wanted the man to say loud, there is sickness, in poverty, in health, in all those things, you know them. I am going to stay with you. See that? Before he put the ring, he vowed, he said, I'll see no other till death do we part. Now, you think it's a joke? Or you think you are telling the preacher? No. You're not telling the church. You are telling your almighty God. Because it is him who set the rules that govern that institution. You see that? So when people say, I do, till death do we part. Do you know what you're talking about? Did you go to, to the preacher you find out if that could be changed? Did you try to do that? To, no, it did not say till she gains some weight. It didn't say that. It did not say till she becomes sick. It didn't say that. Because you already said in sickness, in poverty, in health, in whatever, you're going to stick together. Amen. Until that sticking, the Bible says glued, cleave together. Until the Bible goes further to say, because you are glued together, it is no longer one, but two. It's no, it's no longer two, but one. Amen. And then it continues to say, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder or separate. You see that? I'm just trying, I'm not preaching on marriage and divorce, but what I'm trying to let you know, that in everything we have, God has information about anything as we run this race. Amen. Amen. 
So you just go find out what did God say. Brother, if you have reached a place and you don't love your wife anymore, there is something wrong with you. Amen, amen. So what is the medicine? You see, what is the medicine? <laughs> this is the dawa. This is the medicine. Amen. Go back to the word of God and pray and begin to find out, God, I am in this position. What should I do? And then you'll hear God telling you, brother, you've got to love your wife. Amen, 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 amen. Now, God couldn't tell you what he knew you couldn't do. So mine is not to say, God, I'm very sorry. I don't know what had happened. I think there's a demon that had crept on me to take away that love for my wife. From now, I am going to love my wife more than anything else. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. I don't have to go in detail. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know the, the stuff your wife likes? Go do them. Oh, yes. <laughs> don't call her demon because she made a little mistake. She's not a demon. Was I marrying a demon? You think so? <laughs> don't exaggerate things. That's why we have all these problems. Because we don't want to play according to the rules of the game. So what I'm trying to say is, in everything, God has already told us what to do. So don't tell me, but my faith does not say that. You see that? Oh, my faith, no, we have only one faith, the faith of the Lord Jesus. Anything else that does not align with the word of God, Leave it alone. Amen. Just take what the word says. Amen. You see this? Now, you have to understand this. Paul says, now, we, we read here, we are in a race. You see, we are in a race, isn't it? Amen. Now, if you are in a race, diet, they will tell you to play this kind of a game, you need to lose some weight. <laughs> oh, yes, like me. <laughs> You need to lose some weight because you cannot run with all that weight. You see that? That's what the Bible is saying. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You see, let us lay aside every weight. Amen. Every weight. Anything that is a hindrance. Yes. To you running the race. To you serving God. Put it down. Because you're not going to win with it. All this weight. Oh my girlfriend said. Oh my boyfriend said. Oh they told me. Oh everybody else is doing it. Leave those stuff down. Every weight the Bible says. Let us lay down aside. Every weight. And the sin, what is sin? Unbelief in God's word. The things that you do, but you know the Bible says, don't do. See that? And the sin laid aside, which doth so easily distract us from the rest. And let us run with patience. You see that? Amen. The race that is set before us. Why should we run this? Because there is a price at the end. Every Christian, every Christian says, I'm waiting for the coming of Jesus. Yes, whichever denomination you go to, they will say, I am waiting for Jesus to come and take me. Isn't that right? Yes. right Are you not here for the same reason? That's right. You are waiting for the rapture because you don't want to be judged with the world? That's right. That's 
Okay, so if you are waiting for the coming of Jesus, then we have the rules to follow. So let me go back to Paul. So Paul says the law was given because of transgression. Not because of righteousness, but because of transgression. And then he goes further to say, if you transgress in the law, you will be judged by the law. See that? But if you die without the law, you are going to be judged still because nature is a law in itself. You know that nature is a law in itself? Have you ever seen a bald-headed woman? Have you ever seen one? I'm not talking about somebody who was trying to change the color of the hair. Then, you know, sulfuric or some kind of an acid went to the skull and destroyed. I'm not talking about a woman undergoing through chemotherapy. Because what they're injecting her causes her to lose hair. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about a natural woman. Have you ever seen a bald-headed woman? Who is all this in our midst here? <laughs> Maybe we can get some information there if they have seen. Brother Wana, see you are raising your hand. Have you ever seen one? I'm not talking about shaving. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking about shaving the hair. That's why Paul was talking about women, you know, how they should live and conduct themselves in the house of God. You see that? And he calls that a covering of their glory. But a man, it doesn't matter what you do. God will take it off. You see that? Look at nature. Just look at nature. Now, if you look at nature, you know, look at our, we used to keep these birds, we call them pigeons. Or doves. We used to, we used to have a bunch of them many years ago back at home. By studying those birds, you know, when you know, from the time when they are hatched, they begin to grow. Then, uh, when they become like a bird has reached the age, nature is telling the bird that you are now a big boy. You understand what I'm saying? Nature is telling this bird, you are now a big woman. Meaning, you can now have babies, if I may put it that way. You see that? So there is a way they're going to match themselves. You see, the female and the male will begin to go together and they will stick together. You will never see a confusion in that. This pigeon, this male pigeon, and this female pigeon, once they begin to go together, they will never part ways until or unless one dies. If not, they will never live the way we human beings live. Jumping from this man or to that woman to that and that and just having children all over the place and living as if you are worse than an animal. They don't do that. You see that? That's nature. You will never see this female pigeon going with another female pigeon. Is against nature. You see that? You will never see a bull going with another bull. It's against nature. You see that? So God will use the natural law to judge us. If we try to act like, oh, I don't know the word, I don't know what, you know, I'm just ignorant. I don't know even there is a law. I don't know there is a Bible. God will use nature. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes. 
But now look, look, if you walk, what you see right now in this country, and not just this country alone, you are seeing or witnessing the last days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if this doesn't work us, there is nothing that is going to work you. Now you'll see a man walk on this road and you'll see another man following that man. As if he does not know that's a man like him. You will also see some confused people on these streets. They seem to know which side of the human race they belong. You see that? You see a woman, she walks like a man, she dresses like a man, she acts like a man, she calls herself a man, but she's a woman. That's against nature. That's against nature. Now these demons are going in the church now. These demons are going in the church right now. This is Sodom and Gomorrah now. Show them the Bible tells them. You see, it's abomination for a man to live with another man as a woman. See what they will tell you. They have an interpretation of that scripture. They will tell you we don't accept the things you are trying to tell us. These are new days. This is a modern age. We can do whatever we want to do. We can change that book. In fact, that book is not from God. We have our own, our own preacher explains to us what it means. He says it's all right. You marry whom you love. So this is the only man I loved. And your man, that's a perversion. It's not love. There is no perversion. And this, that, that is, that's perversion. And I told you, you know, recently when uh, there was a young man who was marrying here, and they went to the city hall to get the papers. They changed the papers. It used to be a man and a woman. Now they changed it. You will never see that. They put their partner number one, partner number two. You see that? That's abomination. It's abomination. Before the Lord your God. The things you are seeing right now. You walk on these streets. You see two women are kissing each other in the mouth. It's abomination. Before the Lord their God. They're not even ashamed no more. Let me not go further. But you see, the fire it, that the people calling judgment yes. on themselves is not God. Right. It's not God doing it. Right, my Amen. Amen. I know you will say, oh, but you know, we are exempt. Let me tell you something. I was linked to a testimony of a brother. There's a message church somewhere. And uh, whenever the church is over, we had two sisters. They're not married, single, teenage girls. You know, they, they like going in those dark places, talk to each other, and so close. And there was a concern. There are, what's going on? Should you go to where there is no light, and you're so close to each other, you begin to talk? You know what? It didn't take long. They got married. Those two women got married. Don't think these devils are away from us. The devils, the spirits. Yes. That's why you need to pray. Amen. That's why we need to seek God every day. That's the reason why we need to pray for our children day and night. We need to talk to them to go down. They should cut the hours down those iPods and phones and computers.
Oh yes. They have to, they have, they have to follow the rules. You have to understand as a parent, there is just a time you are with your kids. Just a short time. After that, you're no longer in control. So if you didn't put in anything, it's bad for you. But if you put in that much, you will always see what you put in. Don't underestimate the words of Proverbs. Train up a child the way the child will go. And when that child reaches old, he's not going to depart from that way. The Bible used the word train. Train. And I normally say to some of us who have gone to school, you've been trained to be a nurse. Not everybody can be a nurse. But you are trained to be a nurse. You see that? Now, before they gave you the certificate, and they said, now we have seen you qualified, this paper says you can practice anywhere or in your state. So do all that it pertains to it. See that? They know the things you've learned and you're going to do them right. You passed the test. You passed all those things. You went to do the practicals. You, they examined you. They watched you. See the way you are doing that. They say you passed. Then they gave you the certificate. Not anybody can just do that. You'll be arrested if you try to do it. Like I was talking to one sister, you know, who came to this country as a dentist. And I said, sister, don't you ever tell somebody even to open his mouth and look at it unless you got the paper in this country to do it. Because if anything happens, you'll be locked up and for many years. You see that? We need to pray. We need to train our children. We should not bring up a bunch of girls and boys until somebody looks at them and say, God have mercy on the man who will marry that girl. Or somebody say, God have mercy on the girl that will be married by a boy like that one. You see that? It should not be like that. It should not be like that. We should be proud of our children. Why? Because we have trained them. They know this is how you need to conduct yourself. Sometimes we condemn or we tend to blame those people who have lived before us. They used to teach their children. This is the way to live. Don't live like this. This is how you conduct yourself. This is how you do this. This is how you cook. This is how you do this. And all that. I remember, you know, mommy taught us how to cook and we were boys. So if there was nobody there you could cook, you know, just sitting there waiting. You knew you are responsible. They left you there. You are not going to leave dirty dishes in the sink. We never used to have a sink anyway, but you understand what I'm saying when I say that for clarification or for understanding. That they, mommy left home and found stuff with daddy, but that's what our children are doing now. You're str I'm sorry to go this direction, but just a little bit. You're struggling to change the garbage when you have a bunch of boys and girls in the house. They can't change that. see that? There is a cap in the hallway. They jump over it. And you are watching and you do nothing. And of course you need to understand again, you see this country is in rebellion against anything 
to do with God. So my prayer is that may God give us the wisdom to know how to act, to know how to discipline our children the right way. Because you have to understand again if you just do anything in a few moments you will see life has come. They say, you know, uh, we've come for the children. To those of you who listened to the news a few weeks ago, we had uh, this woman. Now, listen to me very carefully. This woman got married. And when this woman got married, he got married to the boys. I'm saying, God be merciful. If this girl is marrying that boy, she's going to raise the children by herself. There are five kids. This man got locked up. Now she has to work to provide for the children when the man is locked up. He's in jail. And if you don't know, United States has most of its citizens behind the city, behind the, in, in the prison more than any other nation on the earth. So he's there. This woman has to go to work to raise five children herself because the guy did something is in jail. Think about that. So our neighbor calls her from work. He says, I see your children are, are breaking into somebody's house. Because there are a bunch of them, five of them. I think the oldest was uh, uh, 14. All of them down, they're breaking somebody's house. They're getting stuff out. So this woman has to call her from work to go and take care of that. She's upset. She's saying, I never taught my children this. Well, it's tough. Because you are not there, you think they're not learning anything from the TVs and all those gaggers they hold in their hands every day. At night, they wake up down it. No prayer, no reading the Bible. During daytime, I know school are closed. They wake up, they're holding that thing in their hands, and you're saying nothing. What are they watching there? What is this that is so much amusing them? They're spending all the time there. What is this? So the lady comes from work. She's call, she has to call off. She's so upset that I, her own children have just broken into somebody's house and took stuff in bags and running to hide in the house. So he just found them removing their stuff and admiring them. Look at this. <laughs> so in that anger, she had to do some spanking. It didn't take long the police were right over there. They said, you're abusing children. So we are taking all of them from you. Now you see that? So this is a site you are living in right now. And you need to know this. There are ways to discipline your children. There is a way you can do it. And you have to understand something like that can happen. It's when you understand they are not yours. The government owns them. They belong to the government. The woman was crying. They locked her up. Now there is the house there. They lock her up. Now she can't go to her work. You see, now they've taken the children away. The husband is in prison. Now, there was just a, a good neighbor. When she heard about that, this neighbor said, the woman was doing the right thing. It is right for her to have disciplined her children. Now, when we use this word discipline, 
discipline again does not necessarily mean getting a stick and hitting somebody. You can down with your little girl, your little boy, and tell them this is the course I want you to follow. And you are not going to deviate from this way. And if you do so, there are consequences. And when they fail to do so, they must know those consequences are real. There are many ways you can do this. But you have to understand this is where the psychologists agree with God's word that spare the rod and spank the child. They found that's the best way. But I'm just telling you to understand, you know, don't get into that and you're angry and they go to school. They say, where do you get that bump on your hand? Oh, mommy did it. You're in trouble. So you have to know how to act in this nation. You have to understand that. You see that? So now, back again, then I'll close in a few minutes. So you have to understand it is the spirit of God that wrote the law. Men who are moved by the spirit of God wrote the Bible. You see that? Now, the law says, thou shalt not steal. Isn't that the law? It's in the Ten Commandments. So you are not above that law? I'm above that law in the sense that I don't steal. Why? The spirit that wrote that law is in me, is in you. So that spirit carries you above the law. That's what Paul was talking about. That's the sense. In that sense, you are above that law. You see that? Amen. Now, when someone says, thou shalt not commit adultery, you are like, wow. I never even think about such a thing. Why? You are a child of God. Amen. The Spirit of God carries you above that law in the sense that you don't break that law. Because if you break it, you become a transgressor of the law. Amen. So when Paul was talking about being above the law, that's what he meant. The spirit that wrote the law was in him. So you said, thou shalt not do this. He doesn't do those things. Thou shalt not covet. He doesn't covet. Why? The spirit lifts him up above the law. He's not a transgressor of the law, but he's just above the law because he doesn't do those things. Amen. But if you break that law, for sure you will be judged by God. I'm above the law. That's what Paul was talking about. You see that? So anyway, so Paul, uh, looking at the Olympics, the Spirit of God takes him and the Spirit uses his mouth to convey spiritual instruction under uh, the natural figure. So, as we are seeing over here, he borrows from the public games that were there in his time, these symbols or these words, striving. We are in a race. And I told you, in this race, the difference between the natural you see in the Olympics and this race we are in, the difference is one. And I told you this, the difference is we are not competing against each other. You see that? I'm not running against you. Neither are you running against me. But we are all running against the devil. We are all rejecting anything that is contrary to the word of God. Anything the devil tries to throw before us, we are against that. And we are looking to the finish line. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? You see that? 
Now, in the Olympic Games, as I told you, they used to give a wreath. A wreath was something made of just leaves, olive leaves, you know, things like that, just, you know, <laughs> make it round like that and give to the person. It didn't last, really. It was not something that could last, but uh, just what it represented publicly when they called you, that was a great thing. Just for you to come and the great men, the leaders of the country, come and put that on you, it was a great thing. That honor, calling your name, saying you won, how great you are in that spot you are involved in, it felt good. But remember, that's perishable. But as Paul says, it's not perishable. There is something that you will always admire. Something you will forever be thankful for God. Even throughout eternity, you will forever be thankful. It is going to be wonderful. You see that? Oh, yes. You know, when we hear the word a crown, a crown of righteousness. Now, Paul used that term. Uh, I think he used it in uh, Second Timothy. Let me see. Uh, Second Timothy. Uh, just turn, turn your Bibles to Second Timothy. I had not written this down, but uh, I just want to show you something. I think uh, for verse 8, Second Timothy. Chapter 4. Look at what Paul says here. He says, I have fought a good fight. Now that's the race. You see that? That's the race. Verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now this is the race. Now, he did not use the word our, he used my. You see that? Because it's a race on you and you alone, you know you are in it and you know how to run it. I have fought. It is a fight. It is a striving. That word is the same as striving. You are not just going to sit there, sister. You are not just going to sit there and just expect God to move and change everything in the house. You must fight something. I have fought a good fight. Now, the reason why he's saying it's a good fight, it is because he observed the rules of that fight. That's why he says a good fight is a lawful fight. Yeah. It's not unlawful. He did not do things unlawful. You know, even in boxing, when you knock your opponent down, you don't go and step on his chest. You see that if he will come in, lest you are angry and you step on him. No, you wait. He stands up, then you continue. Those are the rules of the game. In boxing, you don't kick. You're disqualified if you do that. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Paul is saying there is a, a demarcation, there is a, a line, there is a course. There is something, there is a work the Lord told me to do. I've done it right. And now I see I've come to the end of the road. I've finished my course. I'm about to graduate. And I did it right. I did it according to the word of God. When God said this, I said yes. I didn't urge you. When God said this, I, did, I said yes, Lord. You see that? And I've kept the faith. 
You see now, look at this. I've kept the faith. Now, a lot of people normally say, my faith is telling me. My faith. Oh, yes, you have your faith. But you have to understand, we are talking about the faith. Which was once given to the saints in the book of Jude to contend for. The faith of the Lord Jesus. That's the one we are talking about. If you are talking about that one, fine. But if you are talking about yours, then that's a different thing. I have kept the faith. <laughs> so that henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You see, a crown. Many times, you know, when we have the word a crown, you are imagining something on the head, isn't it? But you see, it's not just God putting something on the head, no. God is going to, give, to crown your life with a body that will never die. A body that will never be sick. A body that will never experience pain. A body that lives eternally with God. That is the crown. God will crown your life. This, this perishable is going to be swallowed up in the imperishable. This immortal body is going to be swallowed up in the mortality. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. See? But he says, and not to me only, but unto them. So you come unto here, you are here. Unto all them. I am one of them. You are one of them if you have decided to follow the rules. And not to me only, but I love them all. Them also that love his appearing. Amen. I've finished my course. Amen. My sister, my brother, you must reach a time when you can look back and say, praise God, I did my part. I did what God told me to do. And I am ready to go. Don't be like some people when they reach the end of the road. They're screaming and shouting. And saying, oh, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing devils. No, we want to see his face. We want to see his face. You see that? That's the crown. God is going to crown your life with a new body that he will give you at that time. Amen. Oh, what a day. What a day. But you have to understand the rules as you run the race. The rules as you run the race. We are striving. We are striving. To those of you who have been involved in those games, you know how it is. You get tired. But you see, the race is not yet over yet. So now, and you see, the last lap, is that the correct time? Okay. The last lap is when you're here, there, there is a bell. Amen. You know, something will sound. To, just to let you know now, this is the last lap. So right there, you are putting everything that is in you. As somebody died, said, I want to die with this race. You are putting everything. You see that? Everything that is in you. You have seen that, where some people are running and other people are passing on them. Because they build up differently. <laughs> that? You are putting everything. If it is to sweat, sweat for the last. Yes. That's right. 
but you are looking at the finish line. You are saying, I want to reach the finish line. And I don't want to reach their last because I've been playing according to the rules. I want to reach there fast. I want to receive the crown. When the word said, don't do this, I never did that. When the word said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, I did that. When the word says, pray without ceasing, I did that. When the Bible says, strengthen and encourage your brother, I did that. Amen. When the Bible says, love one another, I did that. You see that? You followed what God said. So at the end, you get... the crown. Now, uh, we used to run and sometimes some people would do like this. You know, they would cross. They would cross in the field. So they got the other side. When everybody's going round, but he crossed to go ahead, you disqualified. Even if you reach there fast, you disqualified. So you see my sister. So what is the need? of doing it when you know you are not following the, 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 the rules of the game. What's the need? What's the need of, I mean, I've ended, what's the need of saying, I am a Christian, but when you are given the word of God, when you are given a scripture from the Bible, you say you don't accept it. Or you begin to say, I, I don't see it that way. Okay, how do you see it? The Bible says any relationship any one person here can have, sex before marriage is seen. Amen. It's called in the Bible fornication. Are you hearing me? Yes. So you don't see that scripture that way? You see it in another way so you can continue living that life? And you say you are a Christian? Somebody came to me a few years ago and he said, Brother Ken, what is this that, uh, where Paul was telling Timothy to be drinking some liquor? <laughs> well, he talked about wine, but anyway, this is the thing. <laughs> he wants to be a drunkard, but he wants to call himself a Christian. You see that? So you find out we have a lot of problems. A lot of problems if we are those kind of people. And that's the reason why you see even right there, you see people, even who don't, they will just tell you, but you are not a Christian. If you are, this is what your Bible says. And how come? You don't follow your Bible and you say you are a Christian. You say this is the book of God. I've seen Muslims do that a lot of time to Christians. And they say, but this is what your Bible says. You don't follow that? And then the Christians say, oh, you know, remember Red Heat, Dr. Red Heat of the Sudan mission? And this man, he met a, a Muslim. And this Muslim began to say, you know what? When I read the Bible, your book says that you are Jesus you're talking about. He's saying that this work shall follow them that believe. And Dr. Reid, he looked at the man, he said, which scripture are you referring to? The man says, I'm talking about Mark, chapter 16, from verse 9 to the end. And this man said, no, somebody added that one there. We don't believe that. And of course, if you look at the Revised Standard Version, it only reaches verse 9. The rest were removed. I'll come with a bunch of Bibles here so you can see some of the things that I talk about. Then you understand. Then you will know how vigorous and how serious and the things the devil has done. Then you can know you are not playing with a boy who was born yesterday. It's not there. But if you get a hold of King James Version, you find it's there. The scriptures continue up to the end. So this man says, oh, we believe. So these Muslims say, you don't believe your book? 
So the guy said, okay, if that is not inspired and is there, then the rest is not inspired. Why follow it? Just accept the Quran. Because it says, you yourself, you have admitted that's not the word of God. But it's in my Bible here, your Bible, I'm reading to you. And you say you don't accept. You see that? You see the problem? Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 So, why say you are a Christian? And when someone shows you, you see, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. At the end, you say, I don't accept it. Or, you see, I'll, I'll ask somebody to tell me if that is true. Can you imagine if the Samaritan woman told Jesus, but you see what, you are talking about living water, but before, uh, let me just go to my bishop to find out what the bishop thinks about you. Just think about that. What would the bishop say about Jesus? He said, that's a demon, leave him. Run away from him. You see that? Yes. But right there she knew it was her turn. She has to listen to what the heart yes. is saying in reference to that. And she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Amen. When the Messiah comes, he will tell us these things. And Jesus said, woman, it is the one talking now. Right there she believed and got eternal life. <laughs> Can you imagine when Jesus was calling Matthew and Matthew said, just hold, let me go to Caiapha to find out what does Caiapha say about this. Matthew left everything. He said yes and began to follow Jesus. Right. Thank you, Lord. You see that? But that's what we are doing. You hear the word of God instead of kneeling down and say, Lord, is this true? Is this true, Lord? That's the best thing you can. You read something in the word of God you don't understand, or you hear something being preached, go on your knees. And if you go on your knees sincerely and ask God, God is going to reveal it to you. God is going to show it to you. As I end, I said this in the prayer meeting, I'll just say it again. Because I, I felt touched and I began to think, you know, how we come to church. And it looks like we are not even in the house of God. It looks like even the way we are reacting to the preaching, it looks like it's not the word of God. You see that? When it comes to praising him, it's like we don't even have strength to praise God. When it comes even just to sing for him, you just maybe one or two, and the rest are standing there as if, or just looking. Have you ever seen like, a, uh, I don't mean to say that, but uh, uh, to those of you who have raised a uh, chicken, Maybe you went to uh, grandpa's place and grandpa was very happy. They used to happen that at home many years ago. And they would go get, catch one for you and say, go with this. <laughs> so you go with it home. And when you go with it home, you release it. And the way it walks around, because it's a new environment, it's very careful looking. And you can tell this is a new hand. We shouldn't do that in the house of God. As if you have no clue of what is going around you. As if you don't know what's going on. It's like you are in shock. Just like someone who came in today. Who has never been here before. You see that? When, whenever Jesus comes. There is always rejoicing. People praise him. Sometimes it's so sad. I've had to ask somebody in the church to say, but you want to tell me God has never done anything for you? And said, yes, there is nothing. I'm like, look at yourself. 
You have hands. You can walk on your feet. You have a place where you live. And all that. And for you to speak such a thing, shame on you. I said, go to Trinitas Hospital tonight. Just walk around. You see there's someone who has lost limbs. And he's saying, thank God I didn't die. When both legs are off. And he's saying, thank God I'm still alive. Some people have lost hands. Thank God, but I'm still alive. I told you I went to a church somewhere and there was a girl with one hand like this. And she's really, and she's sweating. And we are people with hands that are standing legs like this. We even stay away from, from the house of God and church is going on and you are watching TV. Or you are just at home doing nothing. Then you say you are going to the rapture. That's why Jesus said the queen of Sheba. Will rise in the judgment and condemns you. He will shut your mouth. At that day. She moved from Ethiopia. Crossed Sahara Desert. Going to see the wisdom of Solomon. But you know what? Greater than Solomon is here. This is the most powerful message. You we got now ever preached on the face of the earth. Amen. You see that? Yes. It's like there is nothing that thrills us. We are like the little kid the mom took to the hospital. Could not be excited with anything. And you know kids get excited when you go to the store and you miss your little girl, your little boy, go to the toy section. They are there playing, shaking a little thing here and touching and looking at some things there and all that because that's what amuses them at that age. The doctor said, your, your boy is all right. And this lady took, took that boy to that uh, store and went and bought some little bells and shook and the child stared. Got another one, shook, the child stared. It's not common. There is a problem. And the woman fell down in that store, began to scream. People rushed. Say, what's wrong? Say, the doctor told me my kid is all right. There is nothing. You see, I shake this nothing. And that's what we are doing in the house of God. Amen. The word is preached. Nothing. I told you, give me even a fake man. I'll take it. But nothing. It's serious. It's serious. This is serious. Nothing, ex the word of God doesn't excite you no more. It doesn't make you feel like walking in the air. That's the problem. So now, this man, I think he was a Baptist. And here, there was a big tent. Brabranham was preaching there. And uh, something began to happen. The tent was so packed up that you could not even see the tent door. Nobody knew where the tent door was. You couldn't see it if you were outside or you came a little late. But we had speakers outside there. This man was a diplomat. His name was Blarov. He had served under five presidents as a diplomat. At that time, in a written language, be it Greek, but in a written language, he knew it. He could read and write in a language that was written at that time. I know now many languages have been written, but at that time, we didn't have so many anyway. But he knew all of them that had been written. And this man, as he heard the, the voice of God, something happened. Right inside there, something happened. And he thought he was a, a very good Christian. Then when the message is coming forth, he began to realize there is something wrong with my Christian experience. Something wrong. 
and that fire began to burn him from within and he began to walk up and down walk and down walk. and he's just walking his, it's like he's in his own world something is burning in his heart and then time came when they said an altar call now remember the, the place is packed there is nowhere where you can pass you know what he said I have to be there and he went down a diplomat on his knees he crawled under the tent in the legs of people he was crawling like a little baby and came and fall, fell right there on the altar and began to cry for the masses of God. Right there, he got the Holy Ghost. He began to speak in a new language. When he began to give a testimony, he says this. He says, you know what? God gave me a new language that I didn't know of. I speak so many, but he gave me a heavenly language. And he left that place saying, I am not the person I used to be. For something wonderful happened at that altar. But we see, we preach and preach, but nothing. Do you know Dr. Ray? Who knows Bro Ray here? A few brothers here know him. You see, Ray, Brother Ray, right now, he's a professor in one of the universities in Ghana. When that man had the word, I preached the serpent seed. He said, Amen. That's nothing but the truth. Now, this is no dummy boy walking around on the street. He is, he is he's doing his PhD. I'm not saying it's education, but I want you to see what God can do. He was in Radgar's University. There was some program. Nobody could teach it there. He transferred to Maryland. State University. See that? But before that he had. He had baptism in Jesus name. He said my heart is burning to do it. Amen. Some of you are there when you were baptizing him in New York. It doesn't matter what I preach. He said that's true. See that? Finished his PhD. He's a man of labs. Sleeping in the lab. Testing this. Mixing this. Mixing the other. And examining that word. And something speaking to him. And telling that's nothing but the word of God. When he finished, he went to Delaware State University. Teaching the physics. Now he's in Ghana. A professor over there. Praising and serving God. When he believed the word, his wife said, I don't want to see you in the house. He said, but honey, I married you, I loved you. I'm going to support you even if you don't want me there. Supported, bought food. Sent there because she could not allow him there. See that? But this man stood. Said, I'm going to define my life. He stood. One time he happened to go there, his wife called the police. Came and escorted her way out. They told him, get everything you have in the house and go. And don't show your face up here. It didn't take long. The woman went. Go, we think was woman with some other man went and sued him filed a divorce and said okay what I want I want a limon I want this and this and this and this and the other that man could have done anything he wanted to do but he said I serve God I'm a Christian and I love God you see that you see when God is calling somebody it doesn't matter which level you are. But sometimes it amuses me when even somebody has no GED and is saying, I don't accept that. No, nothing. 
No certificate. You see, sometimes I'm like, are you out of your mind? Look at the word. This is what the word says. Let me tell you, God is calling professors. We are baptizing them in Jesus' name. God is calling them. God is calling the rich. God is also calling the poor who can hear his voice. Say yes to Jesus. Oh yes. There is a race. There is a race. As you run, run according to the rules. Don't harden your heart. Let not pride take over your life. And you think you are so special. Or you think you are so educated. Or even if you have no education, no certificate, you think you are so good looking. Let me tell you, life without Jesus is but shattered dreams. Life, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you have no value whatsoever to God. You have to understand that. You have no value to God. So don't even waste time saying, God, do this for me. When you can't follow his word, you say, for what? As I told you, a man coming and he's saying, you know, I have cancer, throat cancer, because of smoking. And right there, he's standing before the preacher saying, preacher, pray God to take away this cancer. And he has a pack of cigarettes in his pocket. And the preacher looked at him. He said, so you can continue smoking? He said, I'm not going to pray for you. And if I have to pray for you, it's on conditions that you stop smoking and throw, bring that pack of cigarettes. He refused. He refused to give it up. And here he has throat cancer. What does he want? He wants to use God. You can't use him. Oh God bless me. Bless me. And here you are living your own life. God bless me. Do this for me. And here you are living in sin. Oh God bless me. You can't use God like that. He's too smart for you to use him like that. But forsake evil and say, Lord, I have decided. I have now decided to follow you. The world is gone. I burn all the bridges. I'm not looking back. So if it means I die here, I'll die with you. Those are the kind of people God is looking for. We are in a race. And as you run, make sure you are obeying God's word. Because this is the book that will judge you. Amen. Thank you no other book, this mm -hmm. is the book amen, 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 amen. that God will use to judge the world. Amen. Not this church, not another church, but this is the book. Make sure your heart is beating right with this book. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God.